What is good Tesla family? It's Ray J back with another video. And in this one, I'm going to be breaking down what's going on with the Tesla spy and video, the QQQ and a couple of other tickers. I'm going to break down what's happening to the market thus far, some very important levels to be watching for and what could play out for tomorrow as we're looking at the charts thus far. But before I break anything down all this information, before I get into any more details, let me just mention a couple of things. I am firstly not a financial planner, so take nothing I say as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please check out the Weeble link, which is down below and in the description. If you sign up for Weeble, the link down below and deposit any amount of money into the account, you are guaranteed up to six free stocks. If you deposit $500, you're guaranteed 20 free stocks plus six months of level two data. And if you deposit $25,000 or more, you are guaranteed 70 free stocks plus 12 months of level two data. All of this could be very beneficial for trading or investing and the offer ends in 13 days. Anyways, check out the offer guys if you're interested. Now let's break down what's going on with Tesla. Tesla had a very interesting day. We got a very, very nice pop today before we came back down and started to consolidate. Very sideways price action for the last couple of hours. We had a nice pop and drop as time went on. But the question is, how will Tesla move going into tomorrow? What is something that's very probable? Right? I'm not, I'm not just going to talk about this pennant right over here. I'm going to break down more things about this. Uh, so I'm going to be talking about this a little bit later on. Let's first talk about some news and some very important things. When it comes to Tesla's news for the day, guys, I went over a lot of pieces of news in the last three videos. Uh, so in my first video today, I just broke down what's going on with protesters in Denmark. We're seeing some more protesters blocking some ports over there, which was some negative news for Tesla. In this video, which would be my third to last video by the time you're watching this one uh this one uh, i broke out how tesla basically got a very nice pump and then we had some good data that came out from the chinese registrations being up uh tesla was also looked at as being on track to meet their q4 goals to reach 1.8 million deliveries by the end of the year the data was looking pretty good for that and that's part of why that helped tesla not to mention the fact that the norway numbers were looking really good for tesla too uh, and then finally in this video the last the second to last video i posted the pen ultimate video i mentioned and i asked the question will elon sell tesla shares and i actually gave you guys a very good answer to that so basically in short the answer is for the short term no in December 2022, Elon Musk said he's not going to sell any more Tesla shares for two years or about two years in his words. So that means that he may not sell shares again until late into 2024, maybe even after that. So like by the very end of 2024 is when he might end up doing it again. At least that's like as far as his projection went. And then for the articles, they're basically spreading news that, oh, looking at X, things are not looking that good for revenue. Uh, you know, there's a possibility Musk may have to sell shares sometime in 2024. Yes, sure, you can make that argument. But I just want to note that you could say the same thing about other companies. You could say the same thing about uh, all these different things that Musk is involved in. And I just want to note that what's more important is what could we say with certainty? And the answer is there is no certainty. There is nothing confirmed that Elon Musk is going to sell Tesla shares for the short term. Okay. Could it happen because of X? It's always a possibility, but it's unlikely. Musk said he's not going to sell anything or he's not open to selling until like after December of 2024, basically. And because nothing is con con nothing is confirmed, excuse me, uh, don't let this really scare you. Don't let this get the best of you. I just wanted to clarify all of that. I just wanted to quickly go over these headlines. I don't want to like pull everything out for now. Uh, so, so far, decent news for Tesla. When it comes to the overall market, I just want to call out that we have some earnings coming out. We have GameStop earnings for Wednesday. We have Dollar General for Thursday and just a couple of others. Uh, I'll be uh, very excited about some of these retail ones. It's going to be interesting to witness. For economic data, as a reminder, guys, I went over all of this early on in my videos. Uh, for today, we had all the jobs numbers and et cetera coming out. The job openings were a little bit low, and this is some good news in a way because the Fed wants contraction in the labor market. They don't want to cause like a massive, massive recession or to cause like too much pain to people. The Fed is trying to tell us that they want to bring inflation down and they want to do this without causing as much pain as they could, right? They want some kind of soft landing, basically. So I think there's going to be a soft landing. Honestly, guys, I don't think it's going to be soft. I think that there's pain coming. But right now, the data does not show that there's pain right now. The data is not showing that we're in a massive recession right now. It does not suggest that. When you look at the services data, we're seeing signals that suggest that GDP is going to be decent and the services sector is looking relatively strong so far. 
that's part of why the market pumped. The market's excited about that. We're not seeing recessionary, like major recessionary signals right now. The only thing that's looking weaker would be the job openings. We're seeing a contraction in the labor market that's slight. It's not extreme, it's just kind of slight so far. And this is just what the market wants. The Fed is de incentivized to raise rates again seeing job openings like this. So pretty decent data. This is why the market popped and came back down. It was holding up for the most part though, and it's still looking kind of indecisive. For tomorrow, there's not really anything coming out. We just have exports and imports data an hour before market open. Then we just have a bunch of crude oil data. Nothing too crazy. At 11.30 a.m. Eastern time, though, we have the 17-week bill auction coming out. So we'll be watching that very carefully. But that's pretty much it when it comes to major data or anything uh, for the data side of things. More data is going to be coming out for like Thursday and also for Friday since we have like the payrolls. Uh, but for now, things are kind of chill. So tomorrow is going to be a less data intense day. And we'll just be watching to see how the market moves. The fear and greed index is at greed right now. We're still kind of greedy, not extremely. And other indicators are at extremes, such as market momentum. Looking at the puts and call options, they're at extreme greed as well. But we have seen points where it met these lower levels in the ratio compared to where we are right now. So is it possible that the market pumps a little bit more before we see some kind of pullback? Maybe. When we see extremes like this, this tends to signal the market's topping. But as of right now, there's no signal. There's no true sign, I would say, that confirms the market's breaking down yet. And we just have to be very patient. I'll be breaking down the charts in just a few minutes. For Tesla, you can see that there were a lot of comparisons in like a drag race and things like that, where the Tesla Cybertruck is taking on the Rivian R1T and the Hummer EV, which is pretty cool. Uh, once again, the Tesla Cybertruck has a lot of power, very, very strong acceleration. I think it's like over 800 horsepower, depending on the variant, and very, very cool stuff about it. Uh, they were actually in a drag race. It was pretty cool, and you can actually see how they ended up performing. And the Cybertruck was the one that, once again, came out on top, so it was very interesting to see. And I think it's very, very awesome to see how this uh, continued. So it's, it's, I'm not trying to like bash any other companies. I just want to note that the Cybertruck is a very powerful vehicle and it has a lot of great functionalities. So it's just a good headline that came out. As far as Tesla goes, 137 million in volume, well above average. We got a nice pump. It did dump a bit, but it still managed to close green, which is decent. Short volume is kind of flat. And on top of this, I just want to note that the price price ratio is still trying to curl a little bit as Tesla's gaining some strength compared to the markets. Wednesdays have a tendency of being green about 48% of the time, so they're actually not the strongest of days. And then look for volatility around 11 o'clock a.m. Eastern time and also around 2 p.m. Around that time is when we tend to see the most vol volatility for Tesla. And then we'll be watching all this other data uh, moving forward. But now let's break down Tesla. What do I think is going to happen? It's very simple, guys. Tesla has a pretty decent uptrend that's still being respected so far because if I zoom out of the charts and it actually for now, let me just close this trend line right here. Let me just fix this chart in a second, guys. But I just want to tell you all that Tesla is holding up nicely. It's still continuing to make higher highs and higher lows, at least for the most part, and it has potential to try to continue to push up. So what do I mean by that? If you look at Tesla, on the daily time frame, we hit this support right here. We touched it, we bounced off of it. We touched, the, we touched the support again, we bounced off of it. We touched it again, we bounced. We touched it again, we bounced. It is continuing to uptrend. It's still holding up nicely. So is Tesla going to get a bullish breakout? Well, that's going to depend on if Tesla could break above at least 242 and try to close above that. If it does, I mean, I could turn a lot more bullish. Uh, but for now, I think that after we have this long wick, it's not going to get a super bullish breakout yet. We're going to see some uh, kind of like sideways price action, some resistance get in the way. But overall, I'm not extremely bearish on the markets. I'm not extremely bullish either. I just need to see how we end up reacting to levels. Tesla, however, is gaining more strength compared to the market, so it might hold up a little bit better. If you're bullish on Tesla, just hear me out carefully. You want to see Tesla try to push just like how we did today, come back down and try to hold above 242 or so. Even 240, close above, that would be decent. But I want to see 242. We have some resistance there. A close above, that would be a good sign for Tesla, and we would turn bullish. If you're bearish on Tesla, if you want to see Tesla drop, you want to see Tesla come down to this trend line, you want to lose the trend line of support and actually get back down to the very low 230s. If we lose 230 flat, if 230 fails us, I'm going to turn bearish and I think Tesla is going to come down to fill this gap all the way down to the 220s. So far, there's no sign of that happening though. So I just wanted to be very unbiased when saying that. What do I think Tesla is going to do? Well, this is actually kind of tricky because NVIDIA looks like it might push up a little bit more uh, 
Apple looks like it might drop a little bit by the, by the time we open. And I think that the market looks very indecisive. So I think that this is going to have a very big ripple effect on Tesla. And I think that the most likely possibility would be just to watch these levels. Our support right now, we have support at 237, also 235. And then we have the resistance at like 240 and 242. I'm thinking that Tesla might just trade sideways. I'm not like expecting anything too crazy. We might just be forming like a pennant kind of like this. We might just get tighter and tighter as the day goes on. I'm just not sure if the pennant will start from like here or it's going to be from like way down here. I'm not 100% sure, guys, but we might just see a trade sideways. And that's what I'm starting to anticipate. Uh, we might see a pop when we open that because of NVIDIA and then maybe the market pops a bit. It might come back down like this, continue to trade sideways and then try to respect the pennant. Uh, and we might just get a decent close that's kind of flat. So a somewhat decent close. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw something like this play out and we just see it, you know, get tighter and tighter, but make an attempt to kind of kind of like break out. So I'm anticipating a little pop when we open, maybe rejection. It might come back down towards our support at 237 to 235. That's where we have this imbalance over here. Come back up and just trade very, very sideways and flat. I'm kind of anticipating that for Tesla. I will turn bearish if this thing loses. First off, this trend line of support around 233. If we close below 233, I will turn a little bit more bearish. I will turn even more bearish if we lose 230. Those are two uh, some. Those are two like really really critical supports on Tesla. And then for resistance, uh, you want to see it try to get above 242, try to close above there to turn more bullish. So far, I think it's going to have more of like a cons consolidation day, very sideways day. And I think we may get a bigger move by like Thursday or Friday, which is when we have more data coming out. For NVIDIA, NVIDIA is going to be a big one as well. NVIDIA looks bullish, actually, a little bit bullish. I think it could push a little bit more, but that does not mean that it's necessarily uh, done with the downside. So I think that it might pop and drop. We might see NVIDIA try to push up to try to fill this gap around 467. If we break that, watch 468 to 470 as our resistance. I think it might pop a little bit and then kind of consolidate up here, then eventually come back down and trade sideways. But look for a little pop and drop on NVIDIA. Uh, I'm not extremely bearish just yet. I think it might pop a little bit more, try to make its way up to these higher levels first before it comes back down. Uh, you could even interpret this as like a slanted in, uh, inverse head and shoulders where it tries to pop a little higher to try to fill the gap, get very close to 470, then reject. So that's what I'm seeing for NVIDIA. For SPY, I want to call out something very important on SPY's charts. Right now, okay, SPY is looking very flat on the daily, kind of like indecisive. It hasn't officially collapsed yet. So we're not bearish, like super bearish yet. Could we drop one or two points? Sure. Could we pump one or two points? Sure but we're not going to be dropping like five points, six points, seven points to the downside until we break some critical support. I'm going to, I'm going to close these lines. I had these actually drawn out for earlier. I'm going to close them and then redraw them just to show you what, why these are very important. Uh, basically guys, look at spy on the hourly time frame or even the daily, and you will see something very important. Look at the chart. It's still on a slight uptrend, it is still respecting this orange trend line. The orange trend line is still holding it. We don't have confirmation for the bearish move, okay? If you're bearish on SPY, you want to see this thing reject, come back down to the orange trend line around this 454 zone, and then this 454 area happens to align with the 4-hour 50 EMA. This is our critical support, this 454 zone. We have to hold above that in order to stay afloat. But if we lose this orange trend line, that's when I'm going to turn bearish. And that's when I think it's going to come down to 452. And then we're going to see the move to the downside, right? That's the bearish case. And it can start breaking down even more. Now watch the orange trend line. That's going to be our key support, okay? If we're bullish, okay? If we're bullish, you want to see this thing. And we, you could argue that we have like a head and shoulders like structure that's kind of slanted. But you want to see this thing push up, make its way up above 457.5 to 458. If we break this zone of resistance, it's going to push to fill the gap. It's, it could even try to retest the high we made, and it might reject very close to that area since we have tight resistance. So a pop and drop would be like the, another case where we kind of like pop and then drop, depending on data and such like that. But what do I think is even more likely than that? So I give you guys the bullish case and the bearish case, okay? If we're bearish, you want to lose the orange trend line. If you're bullish, you want to be breaking uh, 457.5 to 458. What do I think is going to happen? Well, I don't think it's going to happen either way. My best prediction would be like we kind of pop in the morning, come back down like this. We might even back test this lower area in the 455s, come back up 
to 457 and just continue to consolidate in a very boring fashion. We might just get a very flat close. I think that's most likely what's going to happen, guys. Uh, the market looks very indecisive for now. NVIDIA could help the market a little bit if it pushes just a bit. And then Apple could be the thing that kind of sinks a little bit going into tomorrow, which might slow the market down. So I think we're going to get a very sideways day. Uh, we might see a little bit of downside, so we might close kind of red. But the thing is, I won't turn really bearish until we break this orange trend line. And I can once again shift my view. We're still going to be waiting. One of the things I said on Friday of last week was that you have to watch for a break to turn more bearish at this point because the market is just insane. They just keep on pumping it and dumping it like crazy, but they're not letting it like really, really drop and get a real healthy pullback yet. Could the pullback happen? Yes, it could still happen, but we have to break our support, which we haven't done thus far. So my best prediction would be like a sideways date for tomorrow, but I gave you guys the more bullish and bearish cases just to be safe, but that's what I think is very probable as time goes on. For the QQQ, What's going on with the QQQ? There's not much data coming out, so I don't expect anything that crazy. I have two possibilities. I think that this thing is going to push a bit thanks to NVIDIA. Maybe even Apple helps just temporarily. And I'm thinking that it might actually retest 388, maybe during the pre-market or even during the open hours. And if we break it, the bullish case could play out where we try to push and fill the gap towards 390, and then we reject. Or, or what could happen is... Uh, we just barely touched 388, then we just fell, and we just come back down. We're actually at 387.77 in the after hours, so we're very close to my target. And we'll just have to see how it reacts to 388. I do want to note that the QQQ is looking not the strongest right now. We just don't have confirmation of a bigger breakdown because we haven't broken our key support. So the 4-hour looks a little bullish. It looks like it might pop a little bit more. We could even try to fill this gap possibly and then drop. So... I think there's going to be a pop and drop like move possibly coming. That's where I'm leaning towards on the QQQ. And I do want to note that we haven't broken our critical support yet. We haven't actually closed below like 383 to turn more bearish. So we're going to be waiting to see if that happens over the next couple of days. But I see two possibilities. Either it pops a little bit more to 388 and it kind of like rejects as soon as tomorrow. And we still close around 385. Or we pop a little bit higher than that. If we break 388 and we just maintain our strength and we have some bullish looking technicals and good looking price action, could be one more little push coming. We could try to fill this gap and then come right back down. A pop and drop is still a real possibility. And this is looking a little distributive. So it's looking a little weaker. It's just that we don't have the big break to the downside yet. We haven't broken this key support yet. So we'll be waiting for that for the next couple of days. That's what I'm seeing for the QQQ. I think I went over everything except for Apple. Apple, in my opinion, is not looking the strongest because, yes, we got a very, very nice break. Awesome, nice looking break to the upside. But I just want to call out that. Let me actually pull up this chart on Apple first. Uh, Apple, it pushed very nicely. Uh, it tried to push to the upside. But I do want to note that it pushed a little too hard too fast. It's a little overbought on the smaller time frames. So I think it might actually cool off just a little bit, especially because in the after hours we're forming this like consolidation structure. So we might see Apple back test 192 and then maybe bounce. Uh, if you're bullish on Apple, you want to see it break above 195 and then we're going to be going back up to 197. If you're bearish on Apple, you want to see this thing basically lose support at 192. What do I think is going to happen? Well, I was anticipating that it's actually getting very tight right now. We might actually consolidate for a bit up here. I had the bearish case drawn out, so just ignore that. Uh, let me just go over this again. So if you're bullish on Apple, you want to see it basically break this high and just continue to push over the next few days. If you're bearish, you want to see it basically lose 192 and then start sinking back down towards this breakout area. But what I'm thinking is very likely this might pop when we open as it's getting tight and then come back down like this and just start trading sideways and consolidate a little bit. But I think it's going to slowly start to descend just a little bit. It might make its way down slowly back down to 192 before kind of bouncing. And we might see something like this on Apple. So kind of like a pop and drop like move with lots of sideways price action for Wednesday and maybe a little selling for Thursday. So a little cool off I think would be completely healthy. And I will turn bullish if this thing can try to break the high it made. It could try to push it for 197 if that's the case. But for now, I think that this is more likely kind of like some consolidation, some sideways price action. And this could slow the market down just a bit. Anyways, that's it for the main five I typically go over. Let's just go over a couple of others real quick. For so far, we're looking a little bullish, trying to break out. I think it's going to try to push back up towards 8.25. That breaks 
Uh, I think 8.5 is coming. There's definitely potential. The IWM and Russell 2000 looking like it's going to try to back test this imbalance at 185, then reject, come back down a little lower. So I think it might actually turn a little bit. It could push a little bit to the upwards direction and come back down. That's a real possibility. Uh, if you look at something else such as Microsoft, we were talking about a balance on Microsoft yesterday. We got the balance. Look for this thing to try to push up to fill its gap up here around 375, maybe a little higher before it rejects and comes back down. On AMD, it's the same thing. AMD might actually retest 120, then reject. So I look for a little pop and then drop on AMD. It might push a little higher, just like NVIDIA, just a little bit more. On the VIX, I just want to note that the VIX has not given us any confirmation of a break to the upside yet. We failed to break our daily 20 EMA. I'll show you in a second. We also have this gap below to fill, which suggests there might be some upside coming to the market temporarily, but the VIX is trying to hold $12. So the VIX is not like super bearish or super bullish. It's still looking kind of weak, but it's not making a big move to the downside or the upside, kind of flats just like the markets. Uh, that's because 12 is where it has some nice support. It tends to hold up very nicely there, but it hasn't been able to hold and close above the daily um, uh, 20 EMA. So once again, guys, the VIX is not breaking out officially yet. The market is just continuing to trade sideways. Same thing on the SQQQ. It hasn't officially broken the 20 EMA. It's still kind of looking weak. The dollar is going to be approaching the 200 EMA around this 104.24 area. Could push and then reject. Coinbase looks a little bearish. We got a bearish looking daily close. It could come down to fill this gap soon. Could see a little pullback towards 134 before it tries to bounce. On Google, it could try to push up higher towards 135 and then reject. It might just push a little bit, a little bit. The daily PPO is looking kind of weak though, so I do anticipate more downside later on. Look for a pop and drop on Google. On Amazon, it's the same thing. I think that this thing might pop again and then come back down towards uh, you know, this 144 area at the 20 EMA. Look for a pop and then drop on Amazon. I wouldn't be surprised. Meta's looking kind of weak. I was actually thinking yesterday Meta would bounce. I actually failed because of bad news. Look for an attempt for it to try to pop again. If it fails to break the 50 EMA at 320, we're going to turn bearish. It's going to try to break it. It might fail. If it fails to break it, it's going to be coming back down towards this low around 315. So watch 320. If we break it, we could try to fill the gap. If we fail, it's going to come back down. Right now, it's looking kind of weak, so the odds do favor the downside. All right, that's it for the uh, analysis for today, guys. Make sure you watch supply and demand. You might see some sideways price action, but watch your levels to see if you, the market can get one more pump. Make sure you watch Tesla as well. Uh, Tesla might get a very flat close, but it might be a little green tomorrow. Uh, somewhat green, but flat close overall, just like today. And we'll be watching it all very, very carefully. The market's very tricky. Do not turn too bearish or too bullish until you see particular levels break since the market is stuck. I just want to remind you guys again of what I called out. I told you all that. Look, we're not super bearish on SPY until we break the orange trend line of support. We haven't done it yet. We're not super bullish until we try to get above this like resistance. If we do do this, there could be one more attempt to push to, towards this high. So you just want to watch on a day-to-day -day basis and watch your levels, watch supply and demand, and I'll see you guys very, very soon. All right, thank you all so much for listening. I really appreciate everyone out there. Have a great day. Tesla to the moon because the long term is still very bright. And if you want more information about Tesla and the news, you could watch some of my previous videos about Elon Musk and such. But until I see you guys again tomorrow morning, have a great night, have a great evening, and peace out.